Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Photoshop Live on the F Photographer Academy. I'm Mark Cleghorn. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at um, the session that we did of Natalia last week on the Academy Live at Five, as it were. And uh, we were running through a series of kind of shots with her during the course of um, uh, the kind of the day and things, really. But uh, during the kind of um, live session, we were looking at uh, a variety of different things. Excuse me for a minute while I'm trying to shut something down. There you go. Um, let's switch to the screen a minute, shall we? And just uh, have a little look about what we did. So leading up to actually going live, we were doing a whole different kind of variety things during the course of uh, the afternoon, um, looking at kind of uh, quick backgrounds. We've been making a whole load, load, load of film for the Photographer Academy. Uh, and basically, we ended up with the Academy Live kind of, uh, as you might have seen, even though we were doing headshots, I ended up having a bit of fun at the end and things of a very long day. But um, again, what we're looking to actually do today is basically, um, from the kind of the variety that we've kind of got in front of us, um, what, what would we be doing? How would we be selecting images? Um, as far as the uh, likes of the best images are concerned, um, I think over the years of experience, you get to know what is the best. Um, if you're shooting headshots anyway, you'll soon tune yourself into expression, what makes the face look kind of thinner or fatter or big eyes bigger or, you know, all those kind of things that you look at. Plus, of course, if you are going to shoot tethered um, like we were, um, then basically you get that option to at least kind of um, see those images straight away. The client gets to see the images straight away and they can obviously choose their selection. So when they're a dancer, an actor and a singer, um, basically, you know, the important choices, believe it or not, are going to be left to their agent and not to me or to the actual client themselves because they're the ones who are representing them and they're the ones who are putting themselves for, for, uh, forward. As far as the kind of the websites that they'll belong, uh, they'll belong to, um, obviously they're gonna need a series of kind of different images to ensure that people really look at them in the light that they need. And because Natalia is a dancer, obviously we need that kind of uh, uh, variety, including some body and everything else with it. So um, pretty much, uh, as I said, we've got all the images in front of us here. There's 170 or 138 in all. Let's have a quick kind of uh, choose of which ones that we want. Remember, get questions in live as you want, uh, kind of during the course of the session. Let's not forget, we always want some kind of simple, basic headshot images with good expression as well. Um, but again, what is expression to you doesn't necessarily mean what is good expression to somebody else and things really. So if I just make my way through, uh, re uh, really more than anything else, I'm looking at the eyes, making sure they're alive. And, and even though there's some beautiful images in here, um, pretty much uh, we're going to make sure that these represent her as a dancer, a, perform a performer as well with it and things really. So I need to actually bring some creativity. So you're seeing images that are backlit now, so don't worry, <laughs> the main light hasn't gone off. It has gone off, okay? It's just basically, um, we're gonna lighten these up uh, in the post angle, which I'll show you what to do now. Okay, so let's just go back through those again. So let's choose some of the best images. I definitely don't want her looking at me during any of these uh, images as well. Uh, I quite like the actual adjustment photographs. Almost looks like she's um, just getting ready. This is where we were, oh, uh, don't know what happened there. Uh, this is where we were playing around with different um, backgrounds to create some kind of real fake, um, kind of different backgrounds without any real work in studio with it. So this is just some uh, blanket, a warm blanket uh, that you're seeing on these images with a bit of gel. This image is just obviously the plain white wall. Uh, a little bit underexposed here. We'll need to actually correct those anyway. Nice expression there, though. We'll uh, recover that. Like the silhouette, again, we'll keep, it, uh, we'll keep that. Um, she does have a Roman nose, so uh, again, it's something to celebrate, not hide from. Uh, the last thing that we want to do as a photographer is disguise um, any facial or body issues because what we don't want to do is get the client in front of a in, in interview and then basically for whatever reason they're told then that they're not quite right because of. So we need to actually show these kind of um, attrib attributes to body and face as well within things really. So this is kind of just finishing off with our kind of variety as far as looking at how we make a plain white wall as different as we physically can. 
Okay, um, so just going through it. Uh, again, nice expressions, bit of the three-quarter shot as well with it. Uh, remember, if somebody's kind of uh, really kind of quiet with the eyes, so in other words, they, they, they're not kind of fully open and alive, um, it's often because they're looking right down the barrel of the lens. Get, get the client to actually just look slightly above the, um, uh, the lens itself. So I like to actually shoot on a uh, kind of a, a, a tether tools kind of um, remote or I like to use the, ca uh, the cable remote instead of actually just looking through the camera. Especially when we're doing headshot photography, we really want to actually make sure that we've got an eye contact with that client to make sure that we are getting the eyes alive instead of actually tired eyes or quiet eyes. I, I like the expression quiet eyes instead of tired eyes. Um, it's just the little things that you do all the time, you know. It's a bit in the same way. I, I use the word cool a bit too much, but cool is an unoffensive word and it makes somebody feel good uh, without kind of making them feel uh, a bit Austin Powers uh, kind of element. And for somebody who knows what I'm on about with Austin Powers, you'll, you'll know exactly what I'm on about. So, so, so cool is almost my default word or great or whatever it would be kind of thing with it. Okay, so uh, we've got some really nice images. Um, these are what, kind of the end shots where we're doing with speed light. Um, let me just take away that smile, I don't think that works. Um, it almost looks like um, a, a bear hug kind of, um, we just turned the jacket back to front. Uh, Natalia thought I was a little bit mad when I was doing it, but I could just see the shot and it almost looks like it's a high-end fashion kind of cloak hood, something out of Game of Thrones or whatever. Um, I'm going to choose definitely too many of these images, I could just tell. There you go. Okay, so um, basically uh, I've chose 64 straight, 74, sorry, straight out of the mix. Um, so basically you know how I work. The ones that I don't want straight away, um, in this case I'm just going to select Control A and delete them. And then these kind of images are pretty much gone. So I only want the ones that I've kept. Now, if you're in any doubt, stick them into a fold folder, back up the folder. But uh, again, this is the work, uh, the workflow. At this stage, remember, I've always take, I've already taken the JPEG that I shot on camera off site. It's already stored um, on uh, my Smug Mug site anyway, kind of thing with it. So I can always refer back to these. Right. So uh, if I wanted to do a review again, I could. I'm just going to zero. I'm just going to kind of zero these stars anyway. So um, let me just control i I'm just going to go into the preferences a minute. If you remember last week, they gave me a new computer at last. I've just gone into the preferences, uh, control E or actually coming up into edit and the preferences. I like to work with the uh, selection of color in, in, in the numerics. So I want to uncheck this require the control key to apply the labels and ratings. If you notice when I was pre uh, pressing the three star or zero, uh, zero to, f to get rid of the star, basically it was just selecting the first number of the image. Um, so by doing this now, press OK, it means when I press the zero star now in the, con uh, the contact view, it basically gets rid of all the ratings straight away. So if I pressed one from this version, they'd all have one star and so on. Right, um, so the next thing would be if we're going to keep all these images, which we are for now, we're just going to go into tools, batch rename, you know how this works. So uh, see, uh, sequence number, there's definitely less than 100 images, which is good. Then we're going to do Natalia. You've, done, you've, you've seen me do this several times now, so you should be used to the flow, yeah? Nothing can be edited before it goes through the copyright flow of kind of making sure that everything is designated to me. And the first part is renaming those images. Uh, so it is um, 03, oh, what was the date last last week? Was it the 10th or something like that? Or? So, 10th, was a good guess, Claiborne. And we're just going to press rename. So these images straight away, they'll all actually had be renamed. It's as quick as that. Obviously, you know, as far as the metadata, we're going to go into tools, replace metadata now. We create this, this Mark Clevel metadata live uh, a few weeks ago. Okay. So within here now, I just need to actually go in and add a description to them. So it's uh, Natalia um, photo shoot. And then in the description, it's headshots for dancer Natalia. 
And then obviously we'd go down to dancer, uh, studio, portrait, headshot, headshot, uh, fashion. Okay, and there we go. So remember, get questions in uh, 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 during the se session, yeah? So those have been applied. I'm ready to work on the images now, okay? So um, what I would do, though, is work on blocks of images at a time, okay? So the, fir uh, the first things first, if you've got a Studio Basic that you want to apply across all the images, we can do it here straight away without even going into the RAW, okay? So uh, to do that, if you uh, select all the images and you right-click, and you just go into Develop Settings, uh, you can basically uh, either copy the set settings from one image to another, um, and basically you can start to actually use um, the kind of the, the whole kind of genre of uh, the bridge way to do many, many things and things really, all right? So uh, we're going ign to ignore that for now, okay? And we're just going to go into the camera raw default. So just coming up in the top, select all the images or selecting just the batch you want to work with. Let's just work with these, this batch of images first. So just going into Control R. This brings us up into the bridge window, as you know. Straight away, I can select all images. And if you're familiar by now, we basically set up the, stu uh, the studio basic, which kind of adjusts the, uh, the contrast, the color, and so on with it. So we're basically there to begin with. Now I can just go in and select these two images here. Um, and uh, working in a slight uh, exposure. So let's kind of come back up into the exposure part here. Let's increase the expo exposure touch. Let's increase our shadows as well. And then these next images are all the same. So all these high key ones. I kind of quite like the uh, muted tone that we've got anyway, but I'm just gonna kind of mute that just a touch more. I'm just going to go in and add a slight uh, soft softness to these images as well by reducing the texture down. Um, this one is definitely needs a bit of cropping. That's an error in camera. Let's bring that in anyway. And I think these two can actually just have a little bit of crop as well. Back into the backlit images. We know these are wrong in, anyway. Back into E, which is the default basics again increasing the exposure, increasing the shadow information. Let's look at what the highlights are doing. In fact, we bring the exposure down, perhaps push the highlights up a touch, open that shadow just a little bit more. Pretty cool. Let's take out the saturation. Do I like it in black and white? Do I like it in color? Let's just keep a little bit of color in there. And I think we'll just go in now and we'll take the texture down on the image to give a bit of a glow. And we'll just take a little bit of the clarity down as well. That's uh, clarity is the mid-tone sharpness. Texture is the kind of the highlight or black sharp, uh, the sharpness with it. So uh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, these images here obviously need a crop in. Let's just crop on mass first. And then I can go back to um, any fine selection. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so at this point now, Control A, selecting all those images, I can just hit the start to process. Um, so let's go and choose where they're going to be going to. So images, Natalia, new fold, 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 folder. Uh, this will be uh, 03, 10, 21, Natalia, JFR, JPEG from RAW. Um, I don't always have to put the date on the front of the folder. Um, it's something that I kind of uh, getting into the habit more and more of doing, um, especially as I'm moving things around. I'm hardly keeping any raw files on sys sys system at all now. So it's just a quick way for me to actually search on fold uh, uh, folders when they're on drives. Right, while that's processing, um, I can actually leave the processing window here and basically that's going to continue to process files all right so i'm not losing any information as i'm going through it i can basically uh, do it remember questions in as we're going um, i'll just um, select some more images let's choose those background um, play around things that we were doing here again just going to control r again 
and once more, Control A to select all those images, going into the preset. So you can see why probably you want to actually bring all the images in at once or apply it in the form of the camera settings. I'll show you how to do that now, all right? So um, as far as this uh, uh, images are concerned, what are we looking to do? Remember, we're into correction here as far as they are going to be good enough for the client to actually buy from. So that's the number, uh, the number one. I don't really want to work finite on an image, an image, um, until basically uh, uh, the kind of the whole process is done and things really. I want to show you a family shoot before we finish the day, just actually the work that's been done in the RAW, and then I'll show you the work that's been done in the Photoshop element, okay? So, um, but I thought this was more apt. So let's go from there. So these two images, again, just a bit of cropping. Let's get rid of the side. I'm just going to take that down a little bit. Um, I think these images need to be a little bit lightened, to be honest. So let's uh, E again, increase the exposure. Do, do, do you hit the top? Doing its job. Nothing wrong with these ones. Let's bring it into the classic. So this is where there's a white wall and it's either being lit from the side or not. So that's pretty good. Um, just going to just take the texture down a touch more. I'm just going to go into the adjustment brush and I'm just going to wipe across the face here just a little bit, take the exposure down to the touch. We'll take the shadow down because that's for some reason I'm going to just soften the face itself. This one obviously needs a lot more work so let's first of all just increase the correction to the exposure, go back to the adjustment brush and now bring it up again. Uh, this pretty much works good, so let's take the blacks down, the, con uh, the contrast up high. Yes, we'll take the whites up as well, uh, and we'll take the, high, uh, the highlights up. And I think we'll just crop this to a vertical or a square. Uh, e again, just increase that exposure. Contrast needs a little bit more. And then going back into the adjustment brush. It's way too much, it didn't reset itself. So if you're unfamiliar with that, if you basically click on the reset sliders automatically each time, each time you come back in, it's not gonna be using those same big effects. Um, now there's times, of course, that we want that box ticked, so it's only gonna make the uh, adjust adjustments in a little way. There we go, contrast a touch more. Okay, for the face, Bring this up just a touch. Next image. Again, you can see now why I would want that brush and the box tick now. So unchecker there. Now I want it to actually remain the same because there's at least three or four images that basically need a help, o a help overall. Um, so I can pretty much do this uh, in about the same time as it takes the client to basically um, put, get all their stuff together. So uh, one of the benefits in the likes of uh, te te tethering is that there's no doubt download from the card going in. So pretty much I'm straight into uh, the, wor uh, the working scenario straight away with it. Just bring up the face. This needs an adjustment to overall first. Now I can go back to the face. Quite like that. I'm just going to actually um, take it into uh, monochrome. If you um, are you using the adjust, adjustment brush, um, remember the shortcut is K. Um, if you want to go back to the previous tool, just pre press K again, and it will take it will take us back into the last tool we used, okay? So I've just pressed K to come back into the adjustment brush. If I press K again, it'll come back into the uh, uh, the uh, basics window once more with it, okay? So again, K, just bring that down. Next shot. Okay, there's a few here. They might need all to get rid of um, that um, softbox kind of thing. It's a real shame because I quite like this image where the shadow is in. Mind me of Blum uh, Blumenthal's in fact really. Um, 
exposure up a touch more. Let's make the contrast pop. Any questions there at all, Brandon, that you want me to do while I'm going through it? Yeah, just uh, again, remember, uh, get your questions in. That's the whole point of doing these things live for you, is that we can basically talk. If you're just joining us live, we're looking at um, a series of images that we shot with Natalia last week on our Academy Live. Uh, we were shooting for the, af uh, the afternoon with her. And um, we finalized. Um, so you can see I just dropped, I selected all the Im images, then I ticked, um, clicked on the top right hand side here, okay, which is up here. And this opened up the dialog box to save, yeah? If, you, if you've already saved, saved it somewhere, the next time you do it, just click the down arrow um, by, but pressing the Alt key at the same time and it automatically knows you want it to save to the save, same folder anyway, all right? So you can see it takes around about a second an image to process from RAW. So why you would not want to shoot RAW in the first place, I've got no idea. Um, cards, um, storage cards are the cheapest they've ever been. You know, storage online is the cheapest it's ever been. You know, it's easy to delete images and if you're only ever shooting a JPEG and you don't want the RAW, then shoot the raw, process them to JPEG like I'm doing, and get rid of all the raw. No big deal coming, you know. Uh, right, let's press done. You can see that kind of um, finished all those images. When it comes back into the post process here in the bridge wind window, of course, it's basically updating the thumbnails to the adjustments uh, kind of going through. So if we kind of look at one image for a minute, let's say um, this uh, blue photograph here, yeah? Um, the one we're seeing. Um, if I right click it and I go to develop settings and I copy the settings, if I want it to apply to these images straight away without even going into a, uh, to ACR and I just right click again, I go to develop settings and I paste the set settings, it's going to ask me which ones. I'm going to just press OK for now for the default and then it's having all the basics done straight, uh, straight away with it. So if you find you've got a whole series of images that need the same adjustments, then basically uh, you might not even need to actually go into the process with it and things. Right, what are we doing? Uh, let's just go through all those looking good. These just need a little bit of help. Just get that focus on the light on the face just a little bit more. Let's open up the shadows to the touch as well. Next image the same. She has got a great smile. Um, Natalia in, um, interned for us for a couple of years in the summers uh, as well with it as a paid intern as well. All right. I'm a firm believer in that. Right. Same thing. Let's process those. Notice that most of these are color. Yeah. Uh, color is it in the world of um, head headshots. Um, it used to be black and white, of course. Uh, it turned itself around about 10 years ago with digital taking more and more online. And they want to see the truth of the skin. Um, what I would say is if you're um, photographing a really deep black skin, make sure you're um, uh, add in just that little bit of natural fill into the shadow. So open it up just a little bit more or shoot with it kind of uh, a little bit lighter as well with it. Just for really great definition. Um, black, black skin. Like I always refer to it in my head as kind of Nigerian black skin. It's really deep black. Um, however, photographically, I need to just lighten it just a fraction. And it's a fraction, I promise you, but it's really the control of the highlight and shadow information together. Um, okay, um, I think uh, it, let's just do these ones first. So let's add the studio basics first, yeah, across all the images. But I think we need to independently look at all of these photographs now. Um, so if we kind of just select uh, these images, uh, I think they all need pretty much an increase in the adjustment anyway. I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse to go up through the basics level to push up. Okay, let's open up the shadow just a little bit more. I think with all this fur though, we should increase the texture. So in other words, a plus to the texture with it. Let's go back to this one image now, pressing the K and just go into the image. Smallen down the brush with the left bracket, 
just to go into here. Next shot, I'm loving this. Um, let's do the face a little bit lighter anyway. I'm gonna smooth the face down. So in that, I'm gonna actually use the mid-tone, which kind of gives us a bit of a glow. All right, the texture down first, and then we'll knock back the glow. There you go. So I'm just applying this now within the actual face itself rather than um, anything else. So these look completely different, agreed? They almost look like a whiteout in the skin and everything else within things really. Usually, if we were kind of uh, looking at the uh, basics, let's just go in for a minute, and if we looked at the uh, color, we'd be looking at the hue, saturation, and luminance. And as a rule, if I wanted to lighten and brighten the skin by increasing the orange, would brighten the skin as you can see, but because the fur is or orange, uh, basically it's affecting the whole image. So that might be something that you really like. Um, I don't mind it, in fact, um, but it wasn't the plan. But I kind of like all this kind of almost clown makeup. It's not, it's a normal um, foundation that she's got on. It's just the way we lit litter. I actually quite like it, in fact. Let's uh, apply an overall texture sharpness anyway to the whole image, not too much. And then we'll take the, gl uh, the clarity back down a touch. Right, uh, let's set these all the same for a minute. So this is, now I've selected all the images, I'm gonna do Alt-S, and that's gonna kind of choose all the different um, settings that I've just done, and that's gonna be applied, okay? Um, now I can go into each of the images and basically make that kind of difference. The one thing I would say is that if you want your eyes to be per perfectly sharp, just don't go in and wipe across them with the kind of the softening tools and so on here. You want to work in close like I am. So remember if I zoomed one, basically it's now going to actually zoom across the others. So this is a, a good way for us to just make a general adjustment to the headshot before the client's proofing. Remember, I'm never going to actually be fully work, working on a file until the client has actually made their selection. The reason being in that, obviously, if I'm going to give, uh, give them a hundred odd to uh, select from, um, I, I basically include the basics of the um, retouching on all images, sell different kind of packages to clients. You'll obviously do your own thing. Um, but basically, I do do the first pass. So in other words, the first edit, I get rid of the rubbish. And then basically, like you're seeing, I do a basic adjustment on all photographs. When the client has then chose, or their agent has then chose the image, I will then go back in and work. So the question is now, what do I do about those lips? I think we should come back to them in a minute and sharpen them up, okay? So let's just do the softness first. I definitely need to come back and do those eyes as well. Okay, so that's a good point in workflow as well. Uh, instead of wor working on the image perfectly, I'm actually working in the general adjustments that I'm working on first. Now, as I said, I'm gonna come back and I definitely wanna work on these lips. So this is gonna be another adjust adjustment now. So this is where just switch off all the other little adjustments that we did. First thing is let's brighten the lips. Let's increase the texture. You'll see what I'm doing there, just a touch. I don't need to increase the saturation at all with it. And basically, if you hover across any of your magnifying glasses, you can see what it's doing. Let's do again the same thing with the lips. Let's increase it. And remember that texture's up. Same thing. I'm gonna come back and do the eyes in a minute. Shrinking down the um, brush. So. I suppose, um, what have we got to learn from today's session so far? The key thing is don't do all the work to the photograph until the client has basically made a decision on the best of the best of the best. Otherwise, you're going to spend your time uh, working on lots of Im images to perfection that the client isn't buying. Um, obviously, if it's an image for your portfolio, portfolio, whatever it be, then of course, you're going to make that decision no matter what. Right, so it's Control-A, select those images. 
hitting the Alt key, pressing the down arrow, and basically the last of those 21 images is now going downwards. So uh, again, the, pro uh, the process in, remember, select the images that you definitely want to work on or you're going to present to the client. At that stage, take, uh, take them either in once they've actually had their rename and once they've had their metadata applied, take them either all into the camera raw environment or bring them in a few at a time um, to allow you to work on a few at a time and those kind of specifics and things really. Once you've kind of worked on the images, I'm processing them off to a new folder, which is JFR, J, uh, JPEG from RAW. And basically that is the one I'm going to be referring back to. I would only really go back to the RAW now in case the client said, oh, you know that black and white image, can I have it in color? <laughs> uh, and then I'm just going to be going back to it and so on with it. But um, otherwise, you know, it takes around about a second per uh, image for a RAW file to be processed. And uh, we're pretty much done. So if we kind of click onto that, at this stage, you would kind of look at, okay, what do I need to work on in Photoshop for this job? For me, nothing. I only need to really work on this job um, when the client has actually made those decisions exactly what they kind of want. So if we kind of just come back to screen again, these are all the JPEG from RAW files done. So all of those 74 images we've done in half an hour uh, without any trouble. So it's all about kind of cutting down your workflow so you can use that time for more creativity. Brandon, any questions on this before we move on to the family? Uh, yeah, so one question being uh, cropping. What's the difference between doing that bridge and Photoshop? Okay, so uh, cropping's a really good one. Um, as a rule, I don't crop. I only crop to hide error. If I crop at first stage, like you might be cropping ever, everything to 10 by 8, but what's the point of that until they've basically cho uh, chosen which images they want? Because their agent is going to be telling me, is it going to be an upright? Is it going to be a vertical from there? <laughs> Even though I've shot them all horizontal, it's going to be them who's going to be telling me what they want. Um, usually, as a rule, in today's society, once they're buying the high-res JPEG from us anyway... Um, it means that it's usually going to be horizontal and then from that if it's going to go into different magazines as they get cast into shows and so on they're basically going to be cropping them down they'll just be giving their head uh, the headshot out and basically they'll be kind of fitting them into the magazine so there's no real need to actually crop down unless you absolutely have screwed screwed up by allowing you know too uh, too much neg uh, negative space at source but if you look at many of those images we didn't touch them in cropping at all Okay, so does the cropping uh, degrade the resolution? Uh, obviously it will, it will throw pic pic pixels away. That's where you want to shoot like a film photographer. In other words, you want to shoot exactly as you can, fill in the frame as much as you can to avoid the limitations on what you've got to do. I mean, if you're applying a lazy crop across all images, the question would be why? I mean. When I first got into digital from film, um, our option was a two million pixel camera. Um, I, I'm shooting on a Mark D3, is it? A Canon Mark D3, I think it is. So, yeah, so. Three. Yeah, uh, uh, 5D Mark III with it. I haven't upgraded the 4 or the 5. <laughs> um, and again, you know, I'm shooting, what, a 20-odd megapixel image, and it's, it's loads for what you need, you know. Um, think about the using the resolution that you've got instead of actually throwing away the resolution that you haven't. Obviously, the more and more you over-save over the JPEG, that is really where you lose a lot of the quality and a lot of the detail. Okie dokie. Okay, so let's uh, go back into the Sharp family, in fact. If you've been over onto the Photographer Academy, you'll basically um, be familiar with this shoot because we did a whole session flow in RAW to show you what I do within an hour for the likes of a fam family, yeah? Uh, and, and basically, there's always going to be some images that I'm going to be creative with, and those are the ones that are going to go through the Photoshop stages as such, really, all right? Um, so we're going to look at this in the next session, but I just want to give you a preview of what we're going to be doing next week, okay? Um, so as far as the kind of the RAW is concerned, in exactly the same way as we did here, um, because we've kind of copied these, we've um, uh, left in more images 
Um, but basically the reds and the no labels, you know by now are going to be the ones that would be deleted. So the only reason that we've given them a kind of a tag of a yellow label as such really, so you can kind of see the difference in the photographs and so on. But realistically, what we want to make sure of is that we're not giving the client um, two of the same photographs. So when we start to actually look, um, I'm not doing this all fully, okay? I'm just going to give you a heads up on it, all right? But when we're looking at the images, you know, it's our job to choose the best of the best, yeah? So you can see there's two images in vertical, two images in horizontal. We've then sat down, then we've got our running images and things. We're, choo we're choosing the best. They would have been two or three, possibly of the running, but those have already been kind of got rid of on the first pass, no matter what within things, really. So then you kind of got, you know, if we look at the uh, woman stood up on the right hand side, we've got hands apart, I've shot too fast, her hands are getting bet uh, better as we're doing them. So the on only thing I've really got to do is that that little boy now um, is better in that first image uh, compared to the mum on the third image of the best. In the second image, he's looking away, or he's got his eyes droopy. Um, what I'm on about is this little boy here, yeah? Um, so that's the one I'm looking at. I know I'm going to have to carry his face from here to the third image. All right, I'm going to have to actually bring this in. And that's what we're going to be looking, as I said, next week, uh, where we're looking at that fine tuning of those images kind of going through it. Let's come back to the screen. Um, and then we're kind of uh, going through the photographs, choosing the best of the best of the best. Um, doing the separate mums with their kids and things, really making a selection whether it's going to be black and white. I'm, I'm literally doing a session with each of those kids, uh, no matter what, and we'll talk about that a little bit next week. But I just thought we'd end with looking at um, the kind of the images that we need to kind of process to have some great effects with it and things really. So um, as far as kind of some, uh, there's some <laughs> images here that you're either going to love or you're going to hate, all right? So next week, if this doesn't appeal to you, don't join us live um, because I'm not here to please you. I'm here to please me as far as the, um, uh, the kind of the client um, uh, presentation is concerned and things really. So, so next week, we're going to be looking at the kind of the reflective mirror that turning this into an action I've searched to make it a little bit quicker to do. Um, I like to have um, select shapes and colors and overlays and tones it's it, i'm not really worried if the client doesn't choose it for the wall it's my job to inspire them to look at my photographs in a different way so i'd much prefer them those who are a little bit brave to have something really custom for their wall than just going for kind of a, a normal kind of shot and things really so i would much prefer to spend 15 minutes in the likes of photoshop doing some a little bit of fun creativity that keeps me stim stimulated and, and put something in the way of the clients. And plus, it, it kind of gives us image straight away if we were entering into awards. Unfortunately, today I don't do that and things because we run the experience group, we run our own awards. I focus in on them, edit, them entering in and so on and celebrating their photography instead of my own. Um, but uh, again, so, you know, when you're looking at this kind of scrapbooking kind of styling that I do using kind of overlays and colors, these were things I was doing at 18 years old, 20 years old and things really with photographs and using gels and kind of spray and kind of uh, and so on, you know, the Hockney ever the fluence here of the, the kind of the four colours and so on. So next week, um, that's really what we're going to be looking at is not just looking at the basic images and what we do like a face move, but we're going to be looking at adding some real dramatic um, stylization to your photographs. As I said, I, I'm not really bothered if you like it or not. Sounds terrible, but it, it's just to, okay, how do we take things to another level? That's what you should be looking at within your business to actually make sure you stand out in the crowd a little bit. Okay, uh, Brandon, any questions to finish off with? Nothing live. Look, guys, thanks for join, uh, joining us live. Um, we've, uh, we've kind of done quite a lot there anyway. Let me just uh, bring that PSD into the likes of uh, Photoshop. Um, and because obviously if you're unfamiliar with layers and blend modes, I don't know why that hasn't launched. Don't you just love it when a plan comes together? I got no idea why it's not launched. It should be there. Um, anyway, um, what we should be looking at between now and next week, okay, is that you should now be familiar with all the flow 
for the session and the basic adjustments. We've kind of covered this now, all right? So now we need to move into that creative development as far as the photograph is concerned. And it still hasn't come on the screen. I've got no idea why, so I'm just gonna drag it into Photoshop. Isn't that weird? I've got no idea why that is not showing up, but I'm sure I'm going to explain it. Uh, I'm going to be explaining it to myself in the next two or three minutes why an image will not open up on Photoshop. Uh, I've never had that in my life, so that's the first time. And isn't it great when it happens live to you? Anyway, look, thanks for joining us live. If you're not familiar with the Phot Photographer Academy, uh, we're an online training company for photographers. Um, we're based on kind of real photography in the real world, whether we're hobbyist or professional photographers. We've got over 3,000 films available to watch 24 seven. Uh, if you're a bedber with us, you can join for 59 quid for the whole year and basically get access uh, it, not only to our film, but you can, edit, you can enter images into our photo critiques. You can enter images for appraisal. You can actually see the kind of the tips and the tricks. You get some great apps uh, for posing as well with it and things really. But of course you can always join us here for free on, you, on, you, on YouTube and just put up with all the ads. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.